Okay. Sometimes it comes in handy. You'll hear comments or something you'll want to listen to again, or if you miss so far, uh, I just didn't get to it. Um, all right. Well, I'm really excited and I can't wait to share your work with each other. Um, the way it works, um, I did send you a kind of informative um, information page about how to kind of critique each other's work. And uh, it's helpful. Uh, it's we're very supportive here. I know that. Um, you know, when we look at a piece of artwork, sometimes you don't really know where to start because it's abstract. We, you know, there's nothing to compare it to. But um, you can just make statements about it. And what do you see or what do you feel? It could be very general, like, oh, wow, well, it's exciting or it's very quiet, meditative. There's all different aspects. Uh, so that's up to you. And it's helpful for the artist to hear that and also to see, have you tell them what you see. You know, I see, oh, this deep space or I see this um, strong elements or subtle or there's this feels atmospheric because the artist, we often don't see our own work. So it's, it's yeah. helpful to hear that and to hear it. And what I'll do is I'm going to hold my feedback for last when we look at each other's work, just so you each have a chance to, um, to say, it doesn't have to go, you don't have to go very long unless you really feel it. And before then, you're also going to have a chance to talk about your experience painting. It's not necessarily blow by blow. First, I layered this, then I layered that. It's more your emotional experience and kind of what you went through. But if you have questions about techniques, that's okay too. Um, and then after that, we'll talk about the following exercise. And I think you all got that. So um, let's, um, any general feedback or information, something you want to share before we even begin our critique? No. Okay, great. Let's go. I'm going to share, I'm going to go it by um, alphabetical order this time, and we can switch that next time. So, about share. Hey, Abby, you're... Abby Jane, oops, I want to do it all at once. It didn't open all at once, but that's okay. Let me do that again. There we go. Okay, make that bigger. We'll just go through it. I'll just let everybody have a look at all the work first. And then, um, these are beautiful. And thank you, Abby. Thanks for going first. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience and how it felt. And um, Yeah, so I, I started off with the large piece it was four feet by three feet on black tar paper mm, that's um, good there. Uh, the black the black one white one um okay. if we could look at that one first yeah I started off here and uh, I really liked the the white on black it was uh I worked outside on I used the construction scraps and old house paint for my landlord's um building project great. which was great, great materials <clears throat> And I was really in my head. I tried to generate these movements from kind of dancing across the canvas, uh, generating the movement from my hips and the center of my body. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the shapes that came out. I like the lines, but I really was perfecting the crispness of the edges and the perfect curves. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it was like it was like a chore so uh -huh. then um a ah. couple days later I had this easel and canvases set up in my living room yeah if you can go to the next next one yeah here's where I started so I said I'm gonna I didn't want to bring the tar paper into my house it is kind of smelly so I just brought the paint in and I and I started a new one and this was a lot more um I think fitting for the assignment Mm -hmm. I, I was able to, I, I had to 
trick myself by making up a little game, um, but I was able to get out of my head and into just the experience of painting. And that's where this came in. So I, what I literally did, <clears throat> I noticed the shadows coming from the other side of the room on the canvas when I held something in front of the, the canvas. So I, I played with the same thing and I ended up using my arm and tracing the shadow of my arm as it moved across the canvas. So that, that was a really fun and playful way to get into, get out of my head and into my body and the experience of painting. And it all came, this all happened, you know, in 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. I loved it. I liked the expressiveness of the lines and the whole process was more, more fun. And I think more um, what you were looking for in the assignment. And it, and so uh, I added a few more lines. If you'll go to the next next one, mm -hmm. yeah. So I added. Uh, there was one in the middle. Is there one other? Um, slide? Yeah, I thought it was a repeat. Uh, uh, that's okay. That's okay. We can um, we can just work with this one. So this is the final one, mm -hmm. and I, I added I added a few more lines, and then. Um, Mm -hmm. I refined some of the lines a little bit and uh, it took quite a quite a bit longer. You can see on the um, on the one side, the line work is a little bit more crisp and mm -hmm. and defined. And I tried to build in some some depth. Um, so I feel like in this process, again, of refining, I got back into my head and I lost some of the expressiveness. Mm -hmm. um, but I like I, I still like the painting and it was it was a fun overall process and even the this once I had the line work um, the refining process was kind of a nice meditative mm -hmm. experience and once I had the rules of the game um, I just I made some decisions about these lines are going to go to the back these lines are going to pop forward and then it was just about doing the work ah uh huh yeah. yeah. So Interesting. Did, you, did you refine it by bringing white paint and painting over the black? Yes. Yeah. I deleted some of the, the uh -huh. lines and I cleaned up the edges. Uh huh. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you. That's really a very good explanation of your process. And um, sorry, I left that one painting out. I looked at it briefly when it was small. I thought it was a repeat. Um, it's just the, the unrefined version, but it's, it's close enough. It's fine. It looks like there's areas in your painting that are kind of grayish and washed a little. Is that just the lighting or is it completely crisp white and black or is there areas of I gray? To add, I tried to add in some color, some blue. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I just started dabbling with a little bit of blue and I wasn't, I wasn't loving it. So I just painted over it with white, but you can still see some coming through. That's a nice thing, isn't it? Painting over. <laughs> yeah, I like the erase button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good thank you uh erase button you mean in life you're not talking about computer. i'm talking about white paint <laughs> yeah okay yeah. yeah great well i think there uh is beautiful there um i just want to preface that there's no right or wrong way to do this assignment and uh, i wasn't really wanting anything in particular except your own personal experience and um so um, the first one, yeah, there's not, there's nothing I was really getting at other than just you learning to react to that one mark and follow it with the next. So mm -hmm. getting into like a, uh, an intuitive experience painting. Um, I'm going to, um, at this point, thank you. I'm going to ask anyone else to just chime in. There's I'm not ready. okay, Susan, uh, you give Abby Jane some feedback on her. Yeah. Art. Could you go to the one with the dark background first? Yeah, sure. Here it is. Oops. <laughs> How did I do that? I hate it when I do that. Um, I have to open it again. Uh, here we go. There you go. Mm -hmm. The thing, I'm really impressed by that background. I love what's going on back there with. <laughs> those angle first you know that that like diagonal angle from the top left down to the bottom the triangle and then you know which are kind of um um 
Are you talking about these areas here? Oh, that yes. is actually that's actually a shadow, and that's not part of the painting. It's just You're the white. You're kidding! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what is the painting? So is the actual painting? It's is the white, the white curving lines? So it's all black in the background. Yeah, it's black tar paper, and yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't. Yeah, I should have waited until the sun was different, but that's when I got the picture. Or and you should go over. <laughs> I mean, I just, that was one of the first things I noticed about it. And I thought that that was such an interesting, like, way to bring the white um, paint forward, the, the lines, uh -huh. which, by the way, are, are uh, they may have been a chore to you, but I think they were worth it. They're very, I like the way you described the process um, of the way that you were able to move. Um, and do you see, did, were you, when you took the paint at the picture, did you see these shadows? I did. And I started to think, I want to trace those shadows mm -hmm. because they're interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. And I then mean, I you know, it's a funny, it's kind of an interesting thing. I mean, I guess the reason I was focusing on it is I thought it created such an interesting contrast and when and it would never occur to me to take a picture of something this accident would be a great way that I would like segue off of it and go "Ooh, I really like that and and to me that's kind of the mystery of the accidents that in my opinion for me at least um create um are the basis of, of some very interesting paintings abstract in abstract art just happy accidents so and the other the other one I ended up using the shadow as the subject so it did inspire me in a way I so suppose. great that's really terrific yeah okay let's can we so I have some comments on the other ones too yeah so again this is is this tar paper also that you painted white or is no it this paper these are two canvases side by side. Okay, and so the darker, um, you it's, know, I'm using my pointer, you can't see it. So, so up here, the, the lines are the areas where it's darker, like here. Right, I, that's, how did you, that's interesting. I like that. I think that that gives, that that gives a different dimension. Um, and I like that. I think that's interesting. Um, it's, because it gives some texture to the, um, and, and definition to where the lines are going. And I like the loosey-goosey nature of the lines here. Um, on the other hand, and the next painting, I mean, I think it's kind of interesting, the experiment, the finished one for that. Mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of the way that you were playing with um, directing some of the lines underneath, some of them you broke off just before they hit um a, you know an intersecting line i think you must have had fun playing with that um and i think that that's interesting oh it's an interesting experiment because it's i guess i guess i'd want to ask you how did you did you learn like what did you learn from that in terms mm -hmm. of well i'll just finish the question there um well it was a it was just an, a meditative process and a, a way to just make decisions and move forward with it. So it was a, it was, it was a good experience overall. And it, it kind of helped me work through some personal things actually. So I'm really grateful for the experience. I'm seeing this like dance there. I see two different sets of lines happening in this painting. Um, one is generated from the top, uh, sorry, I'm a little dyslexic. Um, one is generated from the top corner, kind of going downward with the shoulder and the hand. And then the other one is generated from the bottom and the hand is in the top. So there's these two different sets oh. of movements. I yeah. see it the, with the dark, the dark, thicker lines are one set of movement overlapping the other lines. So I see it as two different dances. There's so many different metaphors for that, the shadow and the light and the um, it could be two people or two parts of myself dancing together. Um, so it was just a, um, yeah, really, really healing kind of process for me to do this. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really interesting, that's really interesting. I like the way you broke some of those, the ones that are going from the bottom to the top that 
that where you broke some of those lines and then others you left alone. I guess the ones on the left hand, um, in the left hand canvas um, are continuous. And then the ones on the right hand side are broken, but it's just a nice experiment um, in what you can do with line and flow. And I think, I think that's a really good effort. I like it. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. Good feedback. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to share anything that you see with Abby? Something? How does it make you feel when you look at it? Anything at all? Okay. That's fine. If yeah, do you want to share a story? Okay. Unmute yourself. Okay. Thanks. Oh, okay, my, um, there you go. My, um, this one, uh, I have this feeling of, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm being um, pulled forward kind of into a, like a, a net that's gonna catch me <laughs> or if it's almost like um, something that is between me and the, Mm. the lines in the background that's preventing mm. me from going oh, that's forward. Interesting. So I kind of like that play. That's all. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Nice. yeah, interesting. Thank you. Yeah. How about you, Elias? Um, I like the variety of lines. I like the black tar paper, the, the accident. It was talked about and how there's a variation in in contrast there's a variation in color in the back but it's not intruding on the subject mm -hmm. which which is makes it very interesting and i like how the lines are curve uh, curvy and flowing like a dance yeah and flowing together like a helix and uh mm. Mm. Like yeah that's interesting. That's, yeah. Great. I even that's, like the very on the line that's this one going left. Oh, the one curving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the only one going off to the side. All the others just attach on the, the vertical plane. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Very loose and playful. Yeah. All of them seem very figurative to me, like um, like a, a, some form of the body. This one actually looks like a figure to me, like a head and a torso and legs. Mm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping to, re, to continue to go back to this one with the new assignment and um, add to it. Yes, it would, be, it would be appropriate for the next assignment. It doesn't, it doesn't feel finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the next assignment's of uh, repetitive shape, which you certainly began here. Uh, yeah. Shape could be a line. Those shapes generally mean that they're enclosed. It's a line right. leading itself at some point, but uh, that's okay. You did actually form this shape here, a bunch mm -hmm. of shapes. Um, uh, that's really good feedback from everyone. And uh, I... I do like the idea that it's an ambiguous type of shape. You did create space. The white becomes background to me, the lines being some sort of linear, well, they're, they're lines, whatever the lines mean, but they're the figure. They're the um, figurative image on a background of white to me. And the white is who knows what it is, but it becomes space of some kind especially how you broke up the lines on the right. It's interesting that you split it into two halves where one, you kind of did the methodical work of cleaning it up on the right and um, mm -hmm. having broken well, honest, Honestly, it took so long that it's just not finished. I intended to do uh, <laughs> this treatment on all of it, but it took a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting though, because it moves from one space to another. And the one on the left, it's ambiguous. You don't necessarily know which line would be in front. Could be yeah, and I kind of, kind of like that better it like allows the viewer to make decisions rather than me forcing the mm -hmm. yeah anyway. yeah 
Well, it could be that you break it up in some places, not everywhere, and that that's enough sometimes not to, to suggest it, not to uh, define it as well as you have, although it's quite beautiful. And uh, I love the ambiguousness of, are you looking through something to get out of or something that you want to get into? Either way, there's something this you've created a network of something that is um, turns into a mesh of some kind. And uh, that becomes your subject. Even though you just started drawing shapes and lines, it kind of took you into this world. What's the size? The size, uh, each canvas is like 16 by 20, I believe. Okay, get it, I got it, thanks. And uh, my general mood is that it, they feel very calm. And uh, I like that you act, wanted to activate the surface too, so that the white's more than just a background or that it has some activation and that gives it some depth as well. Great, Abby. Thank you. It's, it's a great interpretation of the first assignment. It sounds like you were pretty much, you drew a line and, you, and it, it led to the next line. And um, so you were kind of, uh, had, it looks like a meditative process, actually. Yeah. Curious. Yeah, to I would love to. I would love to do the same thing again and uh, see how it, um, see how that came out. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Well, I think that uh, awesomeness. Thank you so much for sharing your work. I'm going to go through this, and we could do a general uh, comments later. Um, I'm not gonna to say too much right now. I think it's all been said. And um, I think it's a great first response to the assignment. Um, all right, let me stop the share and we're gonna move on to the next person's artwork. Uh, since we're doing alphabetical, I'll just look, see what's who's next. Elias, I have two of yours. I think these are a process. I did clean up one, maybe too much. Um, this being the first one, correct? Oh, yeah. hold on. Let me open them so they open in a similar. Here we go. All right. Blow this up so we can all see it. That fills the screen. I'm going to bring it down a little. There we go. This one. Um, one is the last, uh, the final version this is what i have now mm -hmm. yeah. great all right well um let tell us a little bit about your process and uh and while we all just look and absorb what we see here you want to start with the first or the final um it doesn't matter yeah yeah so um the final would be good okay. all right okay. so um uh, i guess i started by um loosening with, uh, I use like a, a, a graphite mm -hmm. to just make lines and shapes. And then uh, I stepped back and then I, then I decided to get the paint out and mix the dark color. And uh, mm -hmm. I think before that, I think I, I put some, yeah, so I mixed, the, I started making marks with my left, I used my, uh, left on a non-dominant hand ah, okay good and, and i was most of the time i closed my eyes oh great and then i opened and looked and uh, huh? and then i started using white to uh, shape shape some of these marks make them maybe curvier or pointer like um mm. some of them been um, edited and some of them got thicker Mm -hmm. And then most of them are my non-dominant hand, except like yeah. upper towards the upper right side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This they look, yeah, they look like they're controlled a bit. Like this one and the one next to it, the one this here. One? Yeah, these two, they were like, like with my eyes open and ed editing and just using mm -hmm. my hand, right arm. I, I did some on purpose, like the drips. Uh -huh. It started out dripping, and I thought, "Oh, I remember, I can do that now." So I just made it more up. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so what I 
about editing is that it created like the negative space in between became more like uh, gray instead of white because of the editing, because of the graphite underneath that grayed the white because I was using white paint over the graphite. And some of it became, was transparent. I was using transparent white. And um, so that was like, I enjoyed it because um, it's like a commission to me, like assignments. Like if I was on my own, I would never have done anything. Um, I like somebody to commission me or an assignment like this for me to start working. It gives me like a, a direction. <laughs> so that's yeah. what, uh, so I think I remember in the first class, I was kind of like saying that I have a love-hate relationship and I was kind of complaining and negative. I guess I was aware, a little aware of that. But, <laughs> but once I guess, once I allow myself to get into it, I start mm. moving with it. Yeah. And, um, I did it over like three days um, because I would come back to it after a long time and then start editing a little bit at a time. And then I, I wanted to introduce the color. And I remember you saying use like different media, uh, like pen, uh, like mm -hmm. uh, I use a pastel oil mm -hmm. pastel. But I think we can't, because it's oil, oil pastel, I think you can't really paint mm -hmm. over. I was nervous. I thought it's maybe it's like it's kind mm -hmm. of committed. But then I didn't care. Like there's some areas where I just decided to paint over anyway and see what happens. Yeah. And um, but then yeah, it showed in the background. It's uh -huh. the shadow. And I tried to de delete some of the red lines because so there were so many red lines. I tried to delete them with a white uh, pastel. But that lightened up the color, so just added more variety. Like everything I did was like mm -hmm. experimental, mm -hmm. and uh, and now I'm looking at it. I feel like I can use more red lines, maybe thin. I can mm -hmm. use more thin lines. Uh -huh. I think, yeah. And the one in the lower, the very low right side. Yeah. It was a solid red. I, I tried, tried to in introduce red color, uh -huh. and then. Like it, so I put white over it, mm -hmm. and then um, just let it be like light, yeah. like a light, and and the one um, right in the middle, underneath the center, it looks like there's some red here. Yeah, it was like a red mark. Yeah, and I much I put like a black over it and let let it show in the mm -hmm. outside. And uh, yeah, now that I'm looking at it, I feel like I can go back and put some red lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go back into it if you want. Um, Especially like the left side here to connect the different marks. Maybe, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, how, how do you feel about the, um, the areas where you said it was more deliberate, more um, right hand deliberate? versus the areas that were left hand and more, a little more random perhaps, I think. Yeah. How do you feel about those marks or the difference? I'm always like, I'm always like um, interested in the non-dominant hand, even though it's new to me, I'm, I force myself to do it. Mm -hmm. I always like the urge to switch yeah. to my right, and then I don't get the res I don't like the results usually. Yeah. But uh, unless I'm, I use my, um, dominant hand if I'm really going to refine something if I know where it's going to be, what, mm -hmm. what they're going to, and I just want to enhance it then. Uh -huh. But I think in the early stages, if I want to just get started, um, I get started by using my non-dominant hand all the time now. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So your marks are not as uh, predictable. Yeah, because, yeah, because I can see yeah, the result on the upper right, mm -hmm. the kind of like geometric. Yeah. It's nice. So then you get a, a nice variety of different kind of marks, ones that you would make consciously, others that became a little more uh, random or um, less controlled, I guess, when you use your left hand. Uh, I love the composition. It's very interesting. And I, I my eyes move around the whole painting. Um, 
but I'm going to let others talk first. So anybody want to talk? Give Elias. Are you ready for feedback, Elias? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready to um, talk. I, oh, go, okay. go ahead, because I talked first before. Okay. <laughs> Happy Jane. Yeah, mine's, um, I, when I'm looking at this, I feel like um, it's uh, a memory of a dream sequence. And you know how you have um, like little flashes uh, from different memories of your dreams. I feel like that's the left-handed non-dominant part of it. And then the the conscious part is like trying to remember the dream as a story and weaving it together. And mm -hmm. that looks like um, what I'm seeing with the red lines and some of the refinements. And uh, I like I like it as a composition. It is it, my eye moves around and I'm interested in all the shapes. And it seems like, um, yeah, some of them look like little creatures. Some of them look like machines. I don't know. It's in, it's interesting. And uh, yeah, I, I like the process and it looks like you. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good feedback. Yeah, thanks. Okay. okay I'll talk. Okay. Is that okay. You ready yeah. for me? Okay. Well, I love the way that you experimented. There are like four or five ideas I've already gotten from your, what you said, um, that I think, um, at least I'll think about incorporating them because it's a, I don't know, you get into ways of doing things, oh, which is the opposite of what I need to be doing. But anyway, some of the things that I thought that I think that are so interesting, the, the non-dominant hand, that's really gutsy. I mean, I mean, that really, to me, that would be like completely losing control. So I give you a lot of credit for that. And I think that it worked really well. Um, there's a lot of energy in this. There's a woman leaping on the left-hand side towards, you know, at the, towards the top. She looks like a leap. I mean, this is, she doesn't have to be a woman, but some, but the, the actual shape. Yeah. yeah. Looks yeah. like somebody making a huge leap. And then, yeah. um, and I love that because it's energetic. It shows movement. And also it represents the leap of faith you took in the way that you worked on this using your non-dominant hand. That was pretty smart. Um, I also thought it would think, think it's interesting. You know, I have these stupid rules stuck in my brain about what, what media work together. And so you were, you said that you used oil pastel and uh, paint and then regular pastel. Is that, no, just oil pastel. Oil pastel and then paint. Okay. Um, and the paint is um, an acrylic. So, right? Right. Okay. See, that's also something that I just would be really helpful to experiment with. Because I was not sure about it. I thought maybe let me just try it. It's an exercise. But yeah, I thought exactly. That... Yeah. I mean, you know, in, I think every single painting that I approach is an exercise because I have no idea what the end is going to be. If I had a, if I was a portraitist, I, I would know when the end was there. Well, I would know, you know, pretty much whether I got the likeness or not. But, you know, to me, they're all kind of experimental, but I just never think of crossing those old rural barriers that I have that you don't, you can't paint on top of oil. You can't paint acrylic on top of oil. Well, yeah, I mean, you can evidently. Um, and even if it shows through, I think that the what happened in that right hand corner um, with the with that uh, pinky orange color that's really interesting. Um, and I think yeah, that particular red was acrylic. It was not. I did not use a, uh, a pastel for the one on the. Yeah, but 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 the streaks and I okay whatever it is that you were doing it's very clear i don't know it's interesting to me that you were able to uh you've got a lot of texture in that bottom part the acrylic part so it's really white um did you try to cover the red with white and that's how that's how you achieve that interesting yeah, yeah see the streaks in that are really nice i think they give it a lot they, to me it's very interesting and then you know i just see a lot of like really interesting um a lot of depth um, in the 
um, in the texture. I like it, it, all the text. You're not, did you use any, you didn't use any thing to scratch or scrape. This is all in the paint, right? Um, the one on the lower right you're talking about, I, I scraped some of the white. So it looks like I'm, there's some scrape there. Uh-huh. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I just, I think it's a really successful effort. And I think that what's the most interesting to me is the, how fresh and gutsy it was for you to like do these different things and just if you put it, if we put it in our minds perhaps that this is all an exercise maybe it makes us braver so yeah. maybe I'll be, maybe i hopefully i'll be braver too so yes i think you did a really good job oh thanks yeah i was just nervous about the oil pastel because i mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're experimental Astari, do you have comments for Elias? Um, yeah, it's long. It's, I, I have a lot. To, I'm, there's a lot of response in me that continues to want to keep looking at it. So mm -hmm. um, that's, for me, the highest compliment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, I did, I think my, my eye immediately went to, of course, that central piece that almost to me felt like a, um, a heart or a totem or something that, that, that everything else is somewhat revolving around. Yeah. Like, uh, not, or a shield, you know, like, uh, it could be so many things, but it, it, it really successfully eludes, um, uh, actual, like that's a thing, a particular thing, like it, it eludes definition for, for sure. So it makes it um, real playful. And, and um, so I, I love this feeling of uh, everything playing with and not with each other, like having that sort of independent dreamy feeling that Abby was talking about. You know, you could, it's just, uh, it's just um, really uh, evocative. I mean, it just really is compelling. Yeah. yeah. That's what I got. Wonderful. Those are great. Um, I, I agree with what, everything that's been said. There's also, um, I mean, I think it's a very successful painting, abstract painting. I love that it was experimental and um, your process and the, the, the surf is very energetic. It's very activated because of all the process you went through of painting and covering up and experimenting. So it makes it very rich, all these subtleties, mm -hmm. as well as the very dramatic areas. There's, it's there, this is strong. That's a bold shape. And here it's uh, not as defined a shape, but the, the, so it's beautiful, it's activated. And those are become vocabulary. That's a conversation, a quiet conversation, a loud conversation. It's all contained within the piece. So there's a lot of variety, which makes it an exciting painting for one reason. Another that I see going on is this area of black here and possibly up here, but in particular here, the black, how it wraps around to the corner edge of your painting, it makes this white shape positive. In turn, for me, I start seeing a big white shape because the black becomes background. Do you see what I'm talking about? Like a rabbit. Yeah. Um, well, you can call it a rabbit. <laughs> we'll just <laughs> call it a shape. we'll call it an abstract shape for now. But uh, there, yeah, it could be the rabbit's paw. So it, I see the white, which normally without that, you know, it the white is just background. Like in Abby Jane's painting, the white is background, and not one point do I see the white become a a, a positive shape. It's the background here. There is an in, uh, ambiguousness because the white starts to become a big shape on a black background. And that's really exciting. So you're, it kind of flips you back and forth. So it engages you like, Starry was like, oh, you know, I, I feel compelled. There's something interesting. You may not even be aware of it, but that's part of an exciting painting. So I love that. And the drips, all of it doesn't look like you had a hard time getting into this abstraction. No, yeah, I, I, yeah, the assignment was, I was excited about the assignment. Mm -hmm. and 
and I enjoyed the process. Yeah. Well, that's very exciting work. I like that you have a limited palette. There's just hints of red, you know, little areas and mostly black and white. And uh, so, you know, you get to treasure those little elements of color too, because they're not everywhere. They're not all shouting, but yeah. they're dialogue. Yeah. But I had a red line. And it moves your eye around the painting too, the color, little splashes of color. So there's movement. And yeah, red is not my favorite because to me it looks like a blood stain, <laughs> like oh, <laughs> like the one um, underneath that heart symbol. Uh huh. But, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, like yeah. if I do, if I do red red drips, it looks like somebody spilled blood. So I don't know. Uh huh. But, but the lines, the red lines, I think work as a, as a line. I like it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I agree too. This shapes um, definitely, it's the focal, it's the main focal point. And also it's dead center pretty much in the painting. So it becomes even more of a pull, but I don't get stuck there. There's a lot of movement because you have such strong elements moving off the edges here and there and there. So it's, there's a lot of strong uh, forces. So I think having a, an element dead center works too. It doesn't make it static but it does kind of anchor it in a good way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that answers my question. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't always work. Sometimes your eyes get stuck and you're, you won't be drawn anywhere else in the image. Um, but having it there, one, it, like Starry says, there's something iconic about it because it holds that center position, you know? And, uh, and it's a little different than the others' shapes. Wonderful. I can't wait to see more. Thanks, Elias. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, let me stop sharing for a second, check the time. Oh yeah, we're early. Let's keep going. Great feedback, everybody. Uh, let's see. Well, we're just doing alphabetical today. So let's go to Starry and then we'll um, either take a break or go to Susan's afterwards. Whoops, I wanted all to show up at once. Hold on. To figure out how to do that. There we go. Uh, I don't know if there's a particular order through these three. Yeah, pages. if you would go to one, that's the was the first one. Was uh, should one. I show this one? Okay. No. The other oh, no. One. The other one, the top starry one. Starry one, it says, starry one. Yeah. Oh, starry one. one. Here you go. Got it. Nice. Okay. Not that, I don't know that it matters, but for me to remember, it sure. helps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Um, if I um, love these, um, tell us maybe how big they are. And uh, um, they're about, uh, let's see, one, two, three, about four foot by three foot. Yeah. Wow. And They're that just, big. You used yeah, a big brush. I did what you said. I used a big brush and I stood back. I put it on a on a pole. Oh, good. I good. That. And I um, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, I had very little time, which yeah. was actually yeah. really good because I didn't get my materials in. So last night I'm doing this, and I was like aware of that I've been looking forward to it, but mm -hmm. to and also being okay with like okay. Yeah, I'm not thinking. You know, I don't have time to think. <laughs> that's right. Good. And that's great. Good. So uh -huh. I just would make a mark and then stand back and and try to respond to it. But then mm -hmm. if something else moved me, I would just do it. And I had fun. And I um, I've I've you know I've done a lot of like other kinds of artwork where having it look good was really a priority. You know, kind of. Yeah. And um. Uh, and and to have to have it, it being put to purpose so it was so much fun to just kind of dance and move my body and and I, you know and I could feel my mind wanting to say oh let's do this or let's do that you know but instead I would stop and then kind of mess myself up by moving around and Oh. and uh getting another angle <laughs> with my hand which wasn't steady or wasn't whatever so that's all oh um, okay I, it was hard I, I so i feel like i want to go I, I did think oh going back in with white would be so much fun or going back in with a finer brush 
-hmm. But since I only had a little bit of time, I thought I'll just keep going with the big brush, the one color, and uh, while yeah. I still have light. <laughs> yeah. So, that's all. I, I enjoyed the movement. Yes, I'm. I was surprised they were so big. Because uh, because uh, the size of the brush must have been quite big. Yeah. <laughs> good good size. One of those bigger brushes. Yeah. I'm gonna look at the other ones too. That bottom one was the second one. <clears throat> I'll bring it down so I can see the whole thing more easily. Yeah. I and think here is where I, I started Oops, to um, right there. I, um, I started to play with it. A, a drier brush and going across, letting things dry a little bit, and then going across and um, with the brush a little dry, and that yeah. was really fun. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it's tempting to want to make clearer shapes and stuff. And then I just really liked um, some of the some of the shapes, even though they weren't strong, they were kind of faded back now, and and this and that. So it just it just was a c continual play for me of things fading back and coming forward and and uh, and all of that. And it was fun. I don't know what else to say. I'm glad it was fun. I like yeah. looking at. They're fun to look at. I'm gonna grab some water. Hold on a second. Uh, they're very exciting. Um, that last one feels really emotional to me. That's all I can say. <laughs> they all feel emotional to me. <laughs> um, yeah, this one in particular. Um, sometimes it's um, it, it's a good idea to give ourselves a time limit. Um, because it, for myself, I um, I overthink the painting and uh, go back into it too soon without giving myself time to just savor what it is that I've created. And then um, and there's a lot going on in these kind of paintings. So um, sometimes the desire is to just keep painting and. Uh, that's okay too, but it's also wonderful to stop and really look at what you did and, you know, enjoy and learn from your marks, you know, unconscious marks like that without thinking. Yeah, this is all so new to me too. It's great to just sort of start at the beginning like this with the marks and very um, bold. And, I, and I'm curious about whether or not I'll feel like going back and continuing <laughs> the reason. You always can. That's always that's always a good choice. Sometimes and just wait and when you know exactly what you want to do. You know, you don't have to know everything. All you need to know is what's the next little thing. And if you have it in your head, you go do that. And and before you know it, the next thing will become more obvious. But it's always good just to know just one thing, just one little thing. You don't have to figure it out. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's. Give start some feedback. These are great. Anybody? Um, can I talk? Or? Sure, Elias, go ahead. This one on the screen right now is the one that uh, uh, attracted me the most. I, I saw the white as shape in it also, like mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so much color. And I the movement, there's a lot of uh, movement and energy and uh, mm. and um, diagonal all kinds of uh, shapes all kinds of shapes and uh, and the speed of the brush gives it lots of energy and, yeah yeah and I think it has a lot of yeah it, it can be enhanced with like coloring like uh, going back with colors and adding some yeah yeah, it'd be great. Is that a is that a sienna bra burnt sienna starry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, burnt umber. Yeah, burnt umber, nice color. <clears throat> Anybody can just yeah. yeah. I mean, are, are we Elias? Are you gonna are you done or? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm done for now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I can I can speak. Well, yeah. um, I've been in a really shitty mood all day because I keep <laughs> because I've been totally bummed out about all these about the coward cops in Texas who waited for an hour while kids were dying after being shot and I'm flipping out. And this is the perfect painting. It looks like I get to punch those cowards and tell them to get in there and rescue those kids. So this is having a very cathartic, this mm. is a cathartic painting for me. Mm -hmm. So there, that's really important. But what's cathartic about it is all that movement. It looks like, mm -hmm. it looks really like what I wanna do right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the way you used the way you're in all of your paintings, you have the ability to use your brush to create a lot of texture, your ability to go between very using a lot of wet paint and a more dry brush. And look, look at this. This is incredible. And it's really good. And in the other place, it really was that very first painting. Um, this one? No, the other one actually. Sorry, one. Those wonderful shapes of the of the. Um, it looks like you slammed the brush against the paint and oh. created this curly hair kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, all of those. I think those are just wonderful. And I I don't know. Are, were you like in a mood in a strange mood when you pe painted this, or did you just kind of? <laughs> I don't know. I, I sorry, don't know. sorry. Are you always in a strange mood? That's the question. <laughs> Is this you? <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. I'm like, no, oh, seriously, some of, I love the way you use this brush. Oh my goodness. Well, it was so fun to just limit myself like that. I really, I mean, I just to be able to be that limited to, and then you know, just see what, what could possibly be done if, with just doing that, because I never have, right? Uh, right. Good. Very bold. Uh, how about Abby Jane? Yeah, I, um, I see a lot of contrast in mm -hmm. all of these, in mm -hmm. the shapes, um, in the textures, and the brushwork, a lot of experimenting, and uh, I see a lot of musicality in mm. all three of them. Mm. Uh, uh, some rhythm, some repetitive shapes, and then some some strong contrasting shapes in all of them. Um, I particularly like the the Starry Two, mm -hmm. um, that good. last one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I particularly like this one, and that has the most uh, musicality. Mm. Um, Oh. Um, like percussion with the dots on the top and um, you know rhythm with the swirls in the middle and like a bass line at the bottom hmm. uh, it has a good uh, composition and foundation hmm. um, framed I, I I really like this one and the, I agree with <clears throat> the other comments that the the top one is is very intense and uh, emotional and um, I wonder what would happen if it were flipped upside down because it's very top heavy like this. And, uh, I'm just curious if that, and, uh, what that would look like. Um, and with all of them actually, um, uh, cause they are abstract, you know, maybe turning them another direction would be, uh, you might find something or see something totally different. Right. And my other suggestion, I think Elias touched on this is, I would, I would love to see these in, in color because there is so much emotion and, and contrast. So I'd love to see what, what colors you would choose to portray some of these marks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. You know, the music thing really w went through my mind. It did? Not that I was not, I just, I was just, uh, I, you know, stayed in a place of being curious and uh, about my what was going through me and I did have music on and I was doing sort of a you know mm -hmm. movement dancing I mean I'm just that's how I'm 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 made anyway to as a dancer and um so 
yeah, so the music thing um, definitely applies. The Starry 2, um, I had, this one, I like it being top heavy. I, I even, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I put my, um, clipped my paper on and unrolled it. So mm -hmm. off the, I have this great de desk that tips up. And so I rolled it off and I decided to cut it lower to leave more white on the bottom because I, I just, uh, something mm. about that, you know, I liked that maybe because of that almost oppressive mood or heavy, like, mm -hmm. I liked, like now that I'm seeing it and I'm hearing everybody's interpretation this is so much fun, you know, then I can, and I get to see it like this. Uh, it's that, that feeling of something heavy, but there's mm -hmm. something light underneath too. So yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. Feedback, yeah. Right. Right. So often. But I when did we... have the starry two turned on the side. That was the only one I went, oh. Oh. That, you know. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, wait. You know. There's a way I can reverse it, but I I have to remember how to do that. Anyway, right now. Um, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Um, I think we're responding to the uh, so much of the uh, rawness, the directness. And they're very direct paintings. Um, you put a mark down, you responded to it with another mark, and you left those marks. Uh, there's something to be said about that kind of painting where you just leave, leave it, you don't obliterate it. Uh, the, actually, the very, very first assignment um, is, that I had offered in this course was not to obliterate, but I didn't, I, that's a little too, def, you know, sometimes it holds people back when they're painting and they desire. Anyway, I, um, there's energy to that, the boldness and the directness and uh, the size. I mean, can you imagine these guys three by four feet? That's a big scale to see big brush marks or to have this hanging, you know, the imbalance basically. We're not used to seeing the heaviest part of a painting on top, except and left their, you know, lofty clouds in a landscape. I mean, this is very modern concept. Um, and I think that's that scary part that you might be responding to Susan anger just kind of this boldness this you know it's way up there in your the lofty area this heaviness oh um, I love it yeah I think it's incredible yeah yeah like I hadn't I had not seen a face up there but I sure do now <laughs> <laughs> that middle piece is like it's like whoa <laughs> um I like the variety of lines and the I don't know if you did them quickly or not, but the quality of the brush stroke leaving a trail makes it feel like it was done quickly. Quickly. Um, uh, I alternated actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes Man, there's a strong sense of movement in each one with the, the line, the linear quality of your brush mark just moving across. We followed that. That's part of what the abstract expressionists were really uh, experimenting with, you know, the- Look at uh, how this one, look at, talk about experiment. Look at how this, and the a lower right hand, just about right at the center. If you go down, look at the way that that brush, you can see exactly how you were holding that brush in that movement. And it's just beautiful. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking? Do you see what I mean? Abby, can you point? Yeah, and then go up. Yeah. Yeah, Just that one, and then go up. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Look at all that's going on in that one little space over there. Yeah, here, I'll blow it up. So get a better and look. what that is, isn't that's just the way your hand was holding the brush and sweeping it off to the left. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. You're really good with it. Is that like a paint brush, like a, like a painter's brush, not, not an artist's brush? It's an artist brush, but I forgot what they call it. It's it's big. It's bigger. Wow. wow. Yeah. I mean, but how? And these were and in the marks that look like hairs. Uh, it was all done with it. That, that same went, brush. Kind of went shivery. <laughs> kind of yeah. Shiver. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. So there's a lot of texture also in your painting from the brush yeah and she leaves it alone and doesn't fuck around it just ugh, it's wonderful <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, very direct. Um, I agree with everything people have said. I'm really loving these and I love the, uh, the uh, they're bold, they're active. You activate the whole page and, um, and your decisions are interesting. We'll see more, you know, as we get developed, we start to see repetitive decisions that, uh, that an artist makes. So we can comment more on that in the long run. Uh, and those decisions made over many pieces of art over many years becomes your style. And you don't have to search for style, it'll find you. So the more you paint, the more something will become more and more you. And right now you're developing a vocabulary. It's like a, if you haven't painted abstractly before, painting, putting down brush marks, you're creating a vocabulary that you become more familiar with. And there's always new vocabulary words and whatnot and sentences, phrases and all that, but it is a, it's a visual language. Uh, so a bold first step into the unknown. Yep. And, uh, yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Starry. Great. Um, yeah, I feel a lot of emotion too, and um, not sure what precise, but it just like, I feel like that is the artist putting themselves out. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Um, they feel like they're still being painted. They're in a state of flux. I don't feel like they're in a state of done, finished, like set aside and we can call it done now. And I think that's, uh, that's exciting in a painting when it feels like it's still like, two people mentioned, oh, I wonder what color, or, you know, that you can still go into it and work on it is kind of a, a nice, interesting phase of a painting and maybe keep it in that phase, unfinished or, you know, still active, call it flux. All right. Now we're at a point, we've been here for an hour. We can take a five minute break or okay. uh, talk about Susan's work. Is that okay. good? Okay, yeah. five minutes, okay. I can't even see what I'm doing here. I'll come back later.
Susan? Yes. I just have to show you this. Did, you don't, hear, tell me, don't tell me you grew that. I did. I did, looked at that picture yesterday. I saw that little pineapple. You remember the little I pineapple? Remember, I, was, I was going through all my pictures yesterday. I remember that little guy. I have a picture of that. Oh my God, I want to bite. <laughs> <laughs> that's the little guy there were two of them there i have like almost 10 pineapple i think i have 10 pineapples growing but this is the first one that ripened I, suddenly i was like oh it's yellow abby i don't even know if i wrote, picked it at the right stage but th when these things come off easily they said that's when you pick it i went to um, a pineapple farm in hawaii and they told me that they know that they're ripe when all of the eyes at the at the top are yeah. about the same same size as the ones elsewhere. So the issue is they the issue is that they should be consistent. You picked it's ripe. It should be ripe because it looks like the top is. You no, know, who knows? Is Abby Jane? She's the. Uh, oh, queen. I've I've heard that you just go by the smell. Yeah. When it smells like sweet pineapple, that's that's the best time to mm -hmm. pick it. Yeah. And once you and once you harvest it, it's not going to ripen any further. Oh, really? So, Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I've, I don't know. I've heard that the leaves, um, that's not an accurate oh. test, but well, I don't know. Up, but maybe you're right. I don't know. It was, it's gorgeous. I would probably pick it like that. You could probably wait a day or two more, but it, yeah. it looks great. Mine are starting to ripen too. Yeah. We're, I'm going to make dehydrated ones this year because I have so many, you know. Oh, are, God. Are, they white, are they white pineapples? Some are and some are yellow. Some yeah, are. That looks like a yellow one, I think. Probably. But I have, there's a few that are bluish looking in colors. So I think yeah, they're like purple colors yeah. and pinks. Yeah. Those are the white ones. Yeah. Anyway, I just yeah. had to show it to Susan because she was here in, in February and um, they were little babies then. <laughs> they're so beautiful. I know I've been inspired to make art from the pineapple shapes too. Yeah, I know. They're pretty complex. Very. Talk about repetitive shape. There you go. It's more of a um, pattern than sh that. More of a, a pattern. Um, we'll wait for Elias to come back. But um, really great um, assignments and exercises, everyone. Hope that you totally enjoyed it. <clears throat> um, there he is. Hi. Hello. Put my glasses on so I can see everyone. <laughs> Um, all right, let's look at Susan's artwork and then we'll talk about the assignment. Mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, hold on, I want them to open together. There we go. Um, yeah, that was the assignment. That was the first one I did because it was a black and white one. Susan, three. can you tell people how big it is? Oh yeah, it's three feet by three feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other one is like uh, 30 inches by 36, I think, something like that. Anyway, um, I haven't painted in a couple of weeks or maybe a month or something. And um, I was just kind of frozen. And go to the black and white one, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. That was the first one. So, um, and I'm pretty, uh, I, I, my narrative is usually from the beginning to the end. It's just a head thing. Anyway, um, so this is the, uh, this, you know, I really learned something from looking at Starry's paintings because I like to do these same kind of big, big strokes, you know, and with the brush and then I look for shapes or whatever, but I kept trying to refine that that those excuse me those raw edges, and I think that I just after looking at hers, I I have to figure out a way to stop myself because mm. that was just beautiful. Anyway, um, I know I'm not allowed to say good or bad, so I won't. But I just think this is really ugly, and I and <laughs> but but I recognize its value because it. Yeah. Its value is that I got back into painting because as, you know, as Elias said, you gave us a commission or an assignment. Um, and um, it, you know, made me do something, you know, got, and, and I think that half of the struggle for me is to just 
be, you know, show up, show up at the easel. And it either happens or it doesn't, but nothing, I mean, everything teaches me something and, and it allows me to learn a little bit, especially with these critiques, by the way, you know, having fresh eyes, see what, see, you know, look. Anyway, so this ugly thing, and then the other one, let's go to the other one, because I'm done with this old ugly thing. Okay. This one was a paint, was two paintings before we had an, I think it was a diptych assignment, Ab, and anyway, so I was just painting, so I decided that those were both kind of, neither of those were very interesting to me, so I thought, okay, let me get some black paint on this. And again, I'm not really, I don't care my, I don't care for the, the whole painting particularly, but I did, I can see where I started to um, get my, get some of, make some marks that were loose and very spontaneous and the kind of marks that I think kind of helped me, help make some of my good paint, the paintings that I like, not good, okay, the paintings that I like successful to me are ones where I can get a, like a natural rhythm and I'm not thinking about it. And anyway, there's a black shape down in the left bottom. Yeah. And there are some light blue marks on there. And I thought, oh, I was very happy when I saw those because they were the kind of loose things that I think pull paintings together. And I thought, oh, thank heavens, I'm finally getting back to. So I see both of these as necessary steps in getting back some, you know, getting some qualities into my paintings that I like. And that's, so for me, this was a really good exercise, even though the, fi the finished product is totally not interesting to me. You're speaking like an experienced painter, Susan. Oh, well, been, I've are. been taking your classes for a couple of years. You are. You're talking about your art in a very experienced way. Um, I don't think you would have talked about that in the same way in the first class you took here. No, <laughs> you're right. I've learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. And you, so I just want to say that, which is, you know, it's nice to be, see that in retrospect. But I'm not going to comment ugly is kind of a concept. Um, I think the idea is that um, when you, you create a painting, an unplanned painting, there's no right or wrong. There's not no good or bad. It's just that the outcome is more or less satisfying in one way or the other. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. And well, you might I, mean, I do think that some things are like, a, some. I, I do have preferences, you know, so. I mean, there's judgment and th that gets us stuck, but sometimes when we judge something, it does keep us stuck because there's no way can, we can move around that. But you can say, oh, it's not satisfying. And then it leads to a question, why isn't it satisfying? And then that it's not so much a blanket statement because it's ugly, you know, because mm -hmm. why is it not satisfying? And that's the, that's the statements you can learn from a little bit more as well <clears throat> for yourself, teach yourself. Um, I just want to say that, and um, I see a strong Susan um, style emerging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay, glad you got back to the canvas, and uh, let's have some feedback from anybody. Um, <clears throat> anybody? Just go ahead. Oh right. yeah, I'm. Yeah, okay. I'll start. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I see uh, this black and white. Um, I love it. It takes my eye into the painting from like the lower right. Mm -hmm. or, and then the dots uh, lead me in a circle. It's very circular. Just keep going in a circle. Yeah. You circle around, come back to where you started. Yeah. And um, and I'm, I start interpreting things as surreal. Like mm. I, I can interpret something that's behind, like a pillar behind uh, the dots as I'm going upwards. Mm -hmm. I, it's like a building of some sort. Um, here, around here? No, no, behind the- further. I see exactly. Here. But yeah, yeah. And then I see stairs in the uh -huh. lower cent center. Oh, right. like, there you go. Yeah. 
Ah, interesting. And like a, I see like a big sea creature with a surreal, with like a surreal eye. Oh, right here is the eye. With, with yeah. teeth and coming oh. around. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, oh God. <laughs> wow. And then, yeah. uh, and then I see like you can do like a fin on the, the far lower left to the middle upward a little bit. Looks like a, like a fin here, like a very thin. Here. I know. Yeah. No. Mm, a little matter. bit to the, a little bit to the uh, out to the left edge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, almost there. Yeah. This one here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, I look like a like a thin light thing. Uh -huh. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And also I see the white as uh, also playing a role in like figure and ground. And mm -hmm. it's like a negative space that's been divided in a way that I can stay engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that. I like the negative space as much as the dark areas. Yeah. It's yeah, it's very circular and engaging. Hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm done. Is there another one I can look at? Or? Uh there's the purple, the excuse yeah. me, the color color one. Yeah, was that like you said it was already a done painting or you said it was from no, another no, but they weren't very developed at all. They were just some exercises yeah. we did. And so, and there were two different ones. It was cut down the center, um, yeah. um, mm. you know, and because it was a dip, supposed to be a diptych. So I kind of combined them. Anyway, yeah, they were, I saw, always just saw those as kind of a background for using black and seeing what I could do with that. So. Oh, so the black is the addition that yes. you did? Oh, oh yeah, and then okay. I also added some more blue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Some of those zigzaggy shapes and, and lines. So this blue um, came on top of it. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. So you integrated the black into the painting by bringing it under. So yeah. It oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that what I did? I guess you're right. Yeah. You did, whether you, you meant it or not. Yeah, of course. Not you're not. You, you brought it in you know, part of it. Cool. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks, uh, I mean, I could, um, like the, the background, which is the color, mm -hmm. is that, yeah. Yes, yes. It's, also like, no it's also like divided in a nice shape, shapely background where you can alternate between the foreground and the background. So. Hmm. And you can actually enhance it more with like a solid color with, every section you can make a solid color because right now it has three colors in a section but i don't know if this is what i'm doing if it's a critique or not i'm just talking <laughs> it's okay it's great it's all good. It's yeah all good. yeah like yeah like um here i don't know i'm pointing to myself but what do you like wear? like the, the far left edge yeah yeah right right here uh, right here yes right here like all of this color can become one color for example and become like one solid area yeah Yes, I see what you're but, saying. Yeah, I'll connect. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it will get get maybe more sim, but it will bring more attention to the black figure. Then I think mm -hmm. it depends on what effect you want. I think because the black figure looks like a bird. Oh, it does. Like a, like a you toucan. Have a great which... imagination. You're Richard. Oh, you Richard, <laughs> Richard had a great imagination in the class and always used to come up with these hilarious stories about what oh, happened yeah. before. And you're doing the same thing. You're just like, you're as good as Richard at that. That's hilarious. I think I think Richard would say that uh, the lower, <laughs> the very low edge down here yeah. with the yellow. Yeah. The yellow, that whole shape that narrows to the back. Yeah. That becomes like a foreshortened penis. That's what Richard would say. Richard himself. Would definitely, yeah, if there was any way that he could write, sure. Yeah, well, he, I'm, I'm you're dead, right. He, it all came down to vaginas and penises with Richard. Yeah. I'm yeah. just making fun of it. Sorry. But, uh, no, I mean, he's probably right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just how he was talking in class. Is just what you're oh, saying? Oh, yeah. 
Well, oh, wow. he kind of refrained. I think Abby yeah. once made Well, he had, a, he had a very vivid imagination and uh, sees the world in terms of mythology, too. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there was a mythological element to a lot of his paintings and others that he's, that's what he saw. That's how he sees yeah. the world. Yeah, it's very well, but also, but he also would have the same thing that um, Elias said about sea creatures. That's something he would have seen too. I mm, didn't see sea yeah. creatures in my first painting, but Richard would have, and so did you. <laughs> that's a, um, that's more of a literal transition sometimes of an abstraction. Um, I was thinking about it because it's you can see abstraction, you can see images, you can see subjects. Uh, but it's sometimes that limits you right away once you mm -hmm. see it. And so some artists hate having anyone say, I see this, because mm -hmm. then they'll see that. And it doesn't, it, it's good. It's interesting. It is what it is, but it limits you from seeing other things. Yeah, yeah. but it's kind of fun for the artist to see what other people see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we don't rarely. No idea. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that's good seeing, Elias. Thank oh, thanks. You. Yeah. Anybody else want to uh, comment for Susan, other than the black and white or color? Yeah, I can comment um, on the, the color one. OK. Um, um, I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing, yeah, the black as the figure. I also do see a toucan. <laughs> and you're right. Once I see the toucan and uh, name it, I can't unsee it. Um, <laughs> I just thought, uh, now I saw so it too. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, I'm covering the top portion of the painting and looking at the bottom. And I really like a lot of the stuff that's happening from the mm. middle down. Um, and I'm seeing the black as a figure, but it's being broken apart and, um, mm. like, fragmented mm. and merging into the background. So it's really creating a lot of depth and coming together and like breaking things apart and putting it back together. I kind of have the feeling of like a broken mirror when mm. looking at this one and um, the little shards of glass, you know, with those angular pieces um, zigzagging on the, the left, uh, the right side. Yeah. It like tiger stripes almost. Yeah. Yeah. They look like broken pieces of glass and shattering and um merging into the backgrounds and um yeah I see a lot of that and I even see opportunities for for more of that um like where Elias was saying on the um the left side under the yeah in that area I could see opportunity for a little more of that same type of treatment of um, breaking down the, the heavy mm. black shape into smaller pieces and mm. this fragmenting mm -hmm. and fractalization that's happening. Mm. Um, it's fun. I, I like this one. It's like interesting, engaging. Um, also got some sort of spiraling movement. They both have some spiraling movement. The black and white one, um, definitely I see a spiral as the, the structure of the painting right away. And I I also saw this like uh, sea creature with the teeth and the eye and uh, it's so I do I do imagine the, uh, what you know what I see it's it's a fun game to like create a story with what you're looking at mm -hmm. and we try to make sense of paintings like that um, so I can, it's kind of yeah it's, sometimes it's nice to not to not see that mm -hmm. and. I think that's why I like the bottom portion of the color one, because I don't really see anything in particular. I just see shapes and relationships. And so, and nothing like jumps out to me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's refreshing in a way. It's uh, like, mm -hmm. I, it's not, um, this is a bird. This is a whale. This is, you know, it's a, it allows me to like take my time and kind of, um, look into it for a longer period. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's really interesting. That's good feedback. What about you, Starry? Um, 
Can we go to the black and white one first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh for me just a, like kind of experiencing the painting is that there's this um there's such a there's such a strong energy of the actual painting in motion of the the process of the painting and then the feeling of the uh outlining is almost like cartoonish and then and that 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 uh, impulse to to define the shapes more as though something wants to come into being defined like you're being asked almost to see shapes or actual mm -hmm. things but they're yeah. not really there mm -hmm. like so there's this sort of uh dance between that going on like i i there i am a definitive form but no i'm not you know <laughs> kind of like this um uh-huh pull with that that's I, I that actually creates a tension for me when I first saw it it was almost like you know overwhelming but with hmm. that strong languaging back and forth for me okay. it's so interesting um this feedback is really valuable are we looking at a mountain ridge and then that's the dark background? No, <laughs> we're not. Right. You know, that's it's a really no, it's not. That's I a face that. a woman with sunglasses. No, it's not. Because mm. the, and that because the whole keeps demanding you back too. Be, one of the things in the color one. That's good. There we go. For my my seeing of it is just the um is that it's a uh, uh there's almost a resistance to letting my eyes settle anywhere. Hmm. And that that each the, the shapes have there isn't a um they're so uh equal almost in um being drawn to them. It's mm -hmm. hard to describe. Yeah. Without a lot of like uh, a neutral space in between. So it feels um really full of content <laughs> i don't know how to describe it but i can't just i can't i can't i can't determine what you know like how to that's good it's it it's apart. hard to talk it's hard to talk about abstract work sometimes um because we're not comparing it to a subject and um so no, i'm these, trying to express yeah what i'm trying to say is this just yeah. that i'm pointing to that towards that that tension which is real interesting to you Thank you. That's really helpful. All of this is. Um, my first experience of this is that it's like a Native American kind of iconic shield or something. And I think um, you do this. I've seen it in your other work where you have this circular center and things happen around the outside of it and the inside. But usually it's pretty big. It fills the whole canvas. And you, know, you can enter into the circle experience, but it definitely keeps my eyes moving around and um, uh, around this kind of movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I would not call this painting ugly. It's, inter it's an interesting painting, Susan. Um, there's a lot of different, and the scale of these different shapes makes it interesting to you some large masses and then these finer lines you know that's kind of fun to play with uh i agree i was trying to i guess i i hear what star is saying about this kind of you're invited or requested or asked in some ways to see a shape and maybe that's the refinement of the line and also you, you love shapes. So there's a desire to create shape whatever that shape is and then it's like okay you're defining the shape so why, what is she saying? Is there something that she's making? Uh, so that those are questions that come up, you know, that's the artist is you having a dialogue about this visual dialogue. And for some reason you're defining the shape. You may not know what it is, but there is, because of that definition, you kind of, or you kind of want to, you're invited to ask what it is a little bit. Sure, and that's fine. I yeah. think it's wonderful. Starry said something that was really interesting because mm -hmm. it was exactly 
what I want, when I looked at her work, hello, sorry to refer to you. When I looked at your work story, um, I thought, oh my gosh, I have such an impulse to close off these, to see those lines and close them off into shapes. And you said that you resisted that urge. And I, and that really was interesting. I have no idea why I see shapes and everything and want to create individual shapes, but you were able to leave it alone. And I, I wonder if I have the, I don't know if I could, I'm going to try it. Also, I don't know, I forgot who said that the woman with the um, wearing eyeglasses, that's hilarious. I, I guess that's in the right, that's so funny. Anyway, anyway, but yeah, this strong um, shape thing. I don't respond to Jackson Pollock's work because I don't get all those wiggles and squiggles and lines, you know? And I finally realized when, you know, after painting why, and in your class, Abby, when you said, told me that, oh, I'm all about shapes. Um, oh, no wonder I don't like Jackson Pollock's work particularly. I, I like his old stuff before he went all squiggles and wiggles. It's just, wow. Yeah. Our, our brains are pretty interesting, aren't they? They are. They are. And it's, it's fun to see what unfolds. Uh, I love the color in this too, by the way, just plain old color wise. It's beautiful. Um, and, uh, I think it's, there was an interesting exercise you gave yourself to integrate the black shapes into basically what was like a color uh -huh. field, color field, almost painting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, uh, I think you did a good job. It's, a, it's an interesting painting. Yeah, I, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's a good exercise. These are all exercises every once in a while, one of them manages to you know break through and to me uh -huh. and that's, that's what painting is so yeah, yeah. well it's showing up beautiful work susan thank you um, thank gonna... you everybody for your uh, insightful have, comments i have one more comment i just noticed on the oh. black and white one if i may oh. yeah hold on let me share that again so we can see it uh susan black and white okay yeah, you know, when I'm looking at this longer, I see so much of the, I see like the dots in this uh, crescent piece that there's white on black. And then at the top, there's black on white, the same shape. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing this a lot. And then I'm seeing this black squiggle on a white background. And then mm -hmm. a little bit lower by the staircase, if you will, there's a white <laughs> squiggle on a black background. Okay. So I like how there's this, I like how you use so much black that it really becomes this strong figure ground piece and the different shapes um, as figure versus ground um, with the contrast. I'm just noticing that and, um, mm -hmm. and liking that, that exploration. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, thanks. That's very, that's very interesting that you said. Thank you so much. This is all very insightful for me. Yeah, yeah, it's good feedback. Helps you see exactly yeah. what you're doing. And I thought I wasn't doing anything particularly. You know, I thought, oh, I've got to start, you know, change, get, incorporating some different things in my paintings and repeat. But the way you, you guys are describing it, no, I'm still experimenting. I had wasn't consciously doing that black and white zigzag and white on black. But I'm ex it's experimenting, I guess. So oh, this is so insightful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, the interesting artwork. Thanks, Susan. Great to see it. Uh, hold on. All right. <sighs> Shall we take a deep breath together? <sighs> yeah, easy to get into our head, heads big time on Zoom. So, uh, um, well, that's great. Thank you. You're all natural critiquers. So I'm happy for that. Um, it's really such a beautiful, fun way to share and also get a little more comfortable about talking about art, mm -hmm. especially abstract art. And actually, you know, all art is abstract. It's just a flat bunch of you know, color molecules sitting on a flat surface. It's an illusion, it's abstract. And uh, it's 
unless we see it abstractly, we don't completely see the painting. That's what I know about, about painting realistically. It's all the same stuff. The elements are all the same. <laughs> you have the ele added element of it looking like a particular subject. So what the person or viewer carries in or you as the artist carries in is also part of it. But uh, other than that, it's, it's the five, what is it? Five basic elements to painting. Do you know what they are? No. I bet you do. What are the basic yeah. visual elements that we play with in painting? Line. Line. Um, color. Yes. Do we, is um, shape? Yes, line, color, shape. Texture. Texture. Val value. Yes, yeah. yeah, you got it. Got yeah. Nice. yeah. There's other side elements like scale and you know certain movement shape, but those are the primary elements that we work with, of which we create um, an enormous amount of possible possibilities. Yeah, the same basic elements. So the assignment um, that I'm giving you is to create um, a painting with starting with um, repetitive elements or repetitive shape in particular. Um, those lines you created, Abby, could be shapes, considered shapes. <clears throat> and um, let's see, I could define shape, but I think you all pretty much got it. It's basically when you create a line and it moves somehow in a direction where it overlaps in itself, it becomes a shape. So uh, it could be an open shape or an enclosed shape, but still a shape. Um, and there's two basic um, ways of describing a shape. And one is geometric, which is like a square or triangle, circle, these kind of um, pure forms. Um, uh, are considered uh, geometric versus um, organic shape, which is essentially curvilinear or um, not even. Um, so in the past, what I've asked people to do is create um, two paintings, one a geometric only, the other um, organic only, and then you can either take one and bring in the other elements so that you have a combination of geometric and organic or, or create an entirely different composition that is a combination of organic and geometric. I think it's interesting to start with one or the other and then bring in those elements. And so your painting is a, is a combination of um, geometric or organic shapes and organic shapes. Uh, recently, I was given a very interesting assignment, so I thought I would give you an option because it's pretty much the same um, uh, as organic and geometric, and that's to take the shapes of the C and the V. And so you have the option if you, unless you have a beautiful shape you really want to go with and a different kind of geometric shape, and that's okay to see because the C is curvilinear and the V is very, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a hard edged shape. You have this corner and a C is very soft and round. Think of it, it could be a male and masculine um, difference. You know, you have these different elements that are similar yet contrasting. So to take either the C's and V's or any organic shape and repeat that shape. It could be, you could change the size of it and the scale of it um, and they could overlap or they could just repeat and form a pattern. And then, uh, but just to do one, same, it's the same process uh, and respond to it, you know, stand back. Unless you're in like, I'm, I'm repeating this. I'm, I'm in a movement here and I'm repeating this. That's okay too. But even then you, you do need to stop at some point and uh, stand back and then see what you did and respond to it intuitively. But the only limitations are to consciously choose an organic shape. It could be a C or a V 
uh, or it could be any shape of your, and repeat that one shape. Okay. Repeat that one shape and then choose a geometric shape, simple and, and repeat that. And, you, and it's up to you if you wanna do an entire composition on ge geometric shapes, that might be interesting. If you've never done that, you'll get familiar with it. Um, so um, I have a question about yeah. when we get to do the geometric, yeah. do we have to have a clean straight line? Otherwise it becomes organic or like if yeah. I wanna do triangles, should I have like a ruler? Oh no, you don't need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. No, no, it's okay. just, you know, just draw the shape. You know, okay. It could, be, it could be painterly and loose. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or you could draw with a, a charcoal or graphite yeah. and keep it and linear to start with and then go into it afterwards with paint. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you can mix mediums. So um, we don't have to like, uh, for the geometric, we don't have to be like, uh, you know, straight, ed straight edges and stuff like, you know. No, no okay, it doesn't yeah. have to be, it doesn't have to be precise. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's just got to show that, you know, it's that it is in fact geometric. So when you say work with a geometric shape like a, a V or a triangle, <clears throat> could you use a circle as a geometric also? Yeah. yeah. Or, or just pick one shape. <clears throat> we can use both, you said. You can, um, well, <coughs> in the one composition, just repeat that one shape. Yeah, okay. Uh, organic shape or and repeat the, the geometric yeah. shape. Okay. But don't, don't have too many varieties. If, I mean, you will have oh, yeah, yeah. Because okay. as, if they overlap, you're going to have quite a variety. You can have a mix okay. of yeah. organic. And it's, uh, it creates a you know, nice, you, well, you'll see. Just uh, take the assignment and run with it. Yeah. Okay. If I, you could fill the whole page with a shape, but I think, uh, and they could go off the edge of the canvas too. You might yeah. just see partial part of that shape. And that's good because if you think about it, your canvas, if it's a rectangle or any square or circle, it is geometric. We're right. our, our, the surface we're painting on is geometric in nature. Right, yeah. Unless you made a choice that it's organic and you're painting on some organic shaped material, that's okay. But in this, you know, most people, you know, it's something to think about because it's a choice. I mean, paper comes in rolls because that's how easily they make it. So they slice it and we get these square shapes that we paint on in canvas too, because of the weave. So, yeah. but we can talk a lot more about that in depth. And that's why a lot of paintings, you know, abstract artists start, well, we'll, we'll get more into that. I don't want to yeah. okay. get ahead of myself, but, um, you know, uh, have fun with it. You know, see, some people realize, oh, they, I like the geometry and it creates an interesting combination with an organic shape. You have the hard edge. Yeah. Are there any um, artists that you would point us to who um, were particularly um, interesting and either that we could, you know, check out online? Um, let me, I have an assignment. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a sneak, preview at this uh, image. Um, uh, where did I put that? Where did I put that? Oh, it's probably here. Uh, uh, season bees, okay. This is an assignment, but I wanna just show you this image in particular. Do you recognize this artist? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, hopefully you can all see it. I'll make it, oops. Uh, this artist is Bill de Kooning or William de Kooning. Um, he, what happens here is my, I don't know if you can see these green and red lines that were, this is the painting. It looks like it's a, a pastel drawing on paper. It looks like a folded here. But here, uh, one of my professors went in and started showing it, all these U's or the U's, our C's rather, and V's. So there's these angular cornered shapes, very angular. You see them all throughout the painting. Here's a big V. Here's another V. You know, there's a V here going in a different direction. And at the same time, he's got a here, a big C, another C. 
Um, here's a here's a C V combination. So there's rhythm uh, happening all over the, based on this kind of idea of the the curvilinear and the and the uh, geometric. These are open ended shapes, the C's and the V's. You can use open ended shapes. It doesn't have to be a shape that's enclosed. I should let you know that it, your geometric shape can be an open triangle or a V. But two, two C's together would be a circle. Is that? Yeah, that's right. So if I use, so I was thinking about mm -hmm. in, in doing a C and V painting, that's, I might wind up with some circles, right? I mean, that's okay. Well, actually I was just thinking, hmm. You're thinking too far ahead. Okay. Just okay. be literal and do what no, you're saying. I don't think you, you can't, you don't know. Till you get there. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, if you end up with mm. a circle that's fulfilling the assignment, sure, that's what you'll discover. Okay. You might find two V's together, make a box. Yeah, exactly. So okay. It depends on how, you know, how perfect they are. Um, but mm -hmm. it's abstract. It's, it's yeah. more of a, a time to explore these elements of uh, corners and curves or okay. geometric versus curvilinear. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Sounds and, great. And do you encourage the same kind of um, approach for the last one where we're not thinking ahead? Well, yeah, it's one mark at a time. Back and forth. What? It's, one, it's one mark at a time. Okay, one mark. So, you know, it's, so often we want to plan it's you know at some point you want to plan a painting out um and you might to some degree but try not to get too much in your head try to try to stay more in the automatic response you are limiting yourself if because you're going okay i'm going to do organic now and then i'm choosing so yeah you're you're putting a certain uh, rule or limitations it's a challenge you are putting a challenge to your complete freedom. However, you can use the same type of brush mark you used before. And uh, if, if you want, um, and just think about the, the shapes. It's more about engagement. You've already were using, mm -hmm. you've already been doing this assignment in your last painting, all of you. Mm -hmm. But now it's just putting the, you know, the focus on yes, I am doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little mm -hmm. more consciousness. But limiting our palette to just I recommend it but you don't have to <laughs> if, if you do um add color don't add too much it's going to become a big it adds so much energy that it can be confusing and uh it's not it's this is more of a uh experience in the kind of the composition or the concept of the shapes um but sure go ahead you can you you know, if you want to do a variety of colors, I would just try to use maybe two colors at most. But again, uh, um, you can give yourself permission, but not to overdo it. I have a question about, you said work um, one mark at a time, V and C, I, but then well, eventually you're saying that make a composition out of that? Eventually well, we have to. Uh, it's, it's if you want to, if it leads to a composition, I mean, these are okay. all exercises to enter your abstract painting. So it's not a composition exercise. It's more just mark making it, still. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it is a composition exercise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it will lead to a composition, whether you're yeah. trying to or not. But uh, you don't have to think of it as a composition. You could so just- So we don't have to, yeah. Okay. You could just repeat and repeat back to do another one here oh oh i'll use my left hand oh maybe up you know but okay. the composition will become will emerge okay. from the mark making and okay you're responding to your marks you don't have don't try not to envision the whole composition before you otherwise we'll be thinking right yeah yeah you know okay, so yeah. if you can try to limit it and not think too far ahead then uh you know i don't know what to do <laughs> Well, we all, it's a combination. You have to think because you have to like somehow get your paint on your brush and make a decision. Yeah. And then at that point, you know, try to just move the energy into your body. One way is to work really big, use a big brush, use your left hand and just 
it, mm. it starts small. And, you know, it could vary, vary the scale of your mark, too. And still, acrylic is still um, preferred, you said, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, But okay. uh, you, if you want to start with a, a different medium, you can, a charcoal. Yeah, okay, but, yeah. Uh, but then uh, charcoal's nice because when you go back in with water, it, it blurs and smears. Yeah, and that's what I like about, yeah. It's so cool. um, I would, if you're going to do that, use a nice smeary kind of material that would lend itself yeah. to, um, to painting. Yeah, you know, material, something that you enjoy painting with. Uh, and if you like crisp, clean lines, then use get yeah, your paint nice and fluid, and you know it'll create a nice even yeah. line if that's what you prefer. Okay. And um, I, Abby, I think that you, your shapes are already you've been doing repetitive sh shapes, but it's more of a kind of work more with specific curvilinear and then angular. Is this, uh, are you all confused or are you? No. To, yeah. I'm all good. Yeah, in terms of examples, I mean, the de Kooning, just that was just part of his motif. Whether he intent, it was intentional or not, we'll, uh, who knows. Now, but uh, uh, of course, de Kooning's the master. <laughs> I'm thinking who? I guess uh, Lee Krasner would be got somebody to look at, Lee Krasner. Organic. For her she, organic. Oh, she did a lot of geometric. She did oh, good. Because I, I only know her organic at times, so that'd be great. Uh, she in her collages, some of her works is a big good combination of geometric and curvilinear. Okay. And um I'll I haven't put a slideshow together of that type of work. So okay, so okay. I'll play around with those two. That'll be yeah. I, I mean I, I don't need it's just it's it's a pathway to into an abstraction and uh, developing a vocabulary that you may have not worked with before. You may prefer never to work with some of these shapes or hard edge or angular, maybe not drawn to it, but um, it's often there in every painting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And these are kind of these beautiful elements that we see all the time, and it creates the rhythm and and adds to a certain balance, uh, consistency in a painting and that makes it interesting. You know, this repetitive idea uh, is not limited to art, you know, listen to any piece of music and there's repetition and repetition. And before you know it, you've got this whole uh, form of music maybe based on a single, you know, line or motif. Hmm. Mm. Yes. Coming up like dance, movement, what is dance? There's a lot of, Repetition. But the vocabulary, I mean, just developing the vocabulary now is really interesting. And frankly, this is a really interest. I just, I'd like to say that this is a really interesting group because you're all very articulate or we are all very, I think this is an exceptionally <laughs> articulate group because we're able to speak about things. This is a surprise because we're just new with each other. Yeah, I can see that uh, people are uh, have a lot of depth. They understand. I don't have to go in and just under explain figure ground. You already see it, so that's good. If there's any uh, type of um, if I, terminology that I use in art speak, let me know if it's uh, confusing. Yeah, I'm not even. Yeah, it's just I don't know. This this is really helpful. Uh -huh. These. Yeah. Well, have fun. Bottom line, have fun if yeah, it's, it's not fun up. stop what you're doing take a break start a new painting this is a really good gauge if you're doing it right or wrong <laughs> but um usually if you're having fun you're doing it right um and if you get really frustrated and you're you know you know take a break and that's okay but I mean, certainly that's part of the process too but you know it's a good it's a gauge to kind of determine you know if you're moving like Abby, you were very conscious and I'm really glad you shared about that. You're like, oh, I got so tedious here and cleaning. And then you were like, that's not what I wanna be doing. Uh, uh, but it, again, that's your process. And it might be that you love doing beautiful clean lines. That's gorgeous. I mean, they're, that's a type of abstract painting that is just fabulous. You know, it doesn't all have to be painterly and, you know, textured. There's all so many different directions to go. And it's important for you just to find out what you like doing. Yeah. 
it's just what you like doing. Yeah, well, right now I'd like to, I think I need some catharsis. So if my paintings next week are a little bit out there, you'll know yeah. why. Hmm. Cool, I love it. Yeah, I know, it's a rough time in the world. Yeah, it is, okay. Yeah. And on that note. <laughs> all right, uh, wonderful work. Thank you for all participating. And uh, we'll have maybe um, another person join us next week. She couldn't make these first two, but she'll be a great addition. Okay. Amy. Yeah. Amy. yeah, terrific. Okay, thanks, bye yeah. everybody. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, bye. thanks for sending your work and I love seeing the progress and everything yeah. that goes on. Yeah, good work, exciting. Okay, thanks. take bye. care, bye, bye. bye.